Now let's continue understanding about uh, MVC filters. Again, I'll be adding a new project, MVC4. Let's create a project name as test filters. Again, empty project with ASPX and a default controller and a default method as we already know. And default method called as index. There is no view available, so I'll be creating a view by using scaffolding template. Add a view which is ASPX and without any master page or so. Simply add it. And here in the page, I'll just write down this is index page. Let's try quickly running the project. And here it offers us output which is this is index page. Okay, base ready. Now inside home controller, what I want to do is I want to apply so called filters. As we discussed in the life cycle of a MVC, that always and always calls are given in some sequence. And there are uh, many ways available wherein customizations can be done in MVC. So what are we going to do now here? We are going to customize the call before index method. Maybe call after the index method. So we want to customize certain things before the index method gets called. And we want to customize certain things after the index method gets called. So in order to do that, we have got a couple of ways. In sequence, if you note, in sequence, there will be before call, then actual call, and then after call. So before call in the sense, if we want to, let's say, manipulate some input parameters. So do we need to manipulate any input parameters or anything before we enter into the method? And after call in the sense, do we need to manipulate result itself? If yes, then we may try handling some methods which actually gets called before index gets called and some methods which gets called after the method gets called. However, the default implementation may not exist. And then we are going to go and push that implementation in the life cycle. And to do that job, we have got a concept called as filters. Filters in general can be of four types. One is called as authorized filter. One is called action filter. One is called result filter and one is called as error filter. However, in this session, we are going to go and talk about action and result filters only. So action in the sense, maybe if we want during the execution or before the execution, if we want to manipulate something. Now, when I say manipulate something, what actually it comes up to is, what if I want to manipulate some data, which we are going to go and pass on to the UI. Maybe in result, in the sense, since we haven't seen a concept called as master page in case of MVC yet, then what if I want to go and set up the master page later on? What if I want to go and set up the values after the method is already rendered? In these cases, action and result filter may help us whenever customization is required based on some input parameters or database values. Now, let's try to understand how exactly one can write down the filter. To do this job, what I'll do is I'll add in order to, maybe we can do one thing. In order to understand uh, result and action filter, what will I do is, I'll try to pass on some value from index method to the index view. But then obviously, we have seen only one way of passing data from the controller to the index method. And that way was using model all the time. What if I don't want to use model? All well, if you don't want to use model, then we have one new feature available in MVC. And that is so-called view data or view bag. So you may add up the data into view data. View data is a dictionary. And this dictionary is available from the, you can say, controller side to the UI side. And we can easily pass on this data from controller to UI using server-side program. So if you see view data, basic difference, 
view data is a key and an object kind of a dictionary which means it will be taking key as a string and it will be taking object which is a value right now but then some this is there since the first version of mvc then we have got mvc3 onwards something called as view bag as well now when i say view bag this is dot it doesn't give you square bracket it's dot and suppose if i want to add name now you may add up name in this manner and if i tell you that this is literally similar to view data the only problem is in view data if i had to enter name i would have entered it in this manner let's say view data i would have specified key as name and i would have specified value which is some value or so look at the thin difference view data strictly typed key is a string and value is of type object no matter what you offer view bag name in this case name is dynamic now dynamic in case of dot net came in 4.0 and which means it's going to go and find out the value of that content and it's going to go and typecast itself accordingly but that too not at compile time it will be at run time so whenever we use dynamic type internally dynamic uses reflection and reflection always reduces the performance of your system so view bag is a new huge feature but then as far as possible you may continue using view data but view bag is just dependent on dynamic as a type so it holds anything as dynamic and key is also dynamic right now so anyway if we have to go and hold this data in both ways suppose if i put f name as sachin and if i put suppose s name as suppose tendulkar and if i want to pass on you need not pass on anything into the view now because if there is a model model is something that we have always passed but now this data like view data f name and view bag of s name is always available in case of index aspx so we can always specify here something like hello and then in the person bracket we can always get the value of view data f name as it is we can print it and then we can always print the data which is from view bag as well copy this and paste it and now when you run the code you may imagine that is instead of passing model you may pass on values in a multiple manner in this way itself so we have got one sachin and one value called as tendulkar so this way it becomes very easy to pass on the data now the thing is can we change these values based on the filter so what i'm going to do is before the call goes to index and after the call goes a uh, call happens to index i want to make a small change in the view data or view bag and then we are going to make that change using the filter itself so what is a filter exactly filter is a simple class which implements couple of interfaces based on what kind of a filter is that so as an example i am going to add as usual a folder here called as helpers inside the folder called helpers i am going to add a new class let's name this class as maybe h filter over here this h filter that we have is going to go and inherit from one interface which is called as i action filter now action filter normally comes from a inter from a namespace called system.web.mvc and then if i implement this we have got two methods here on action executed and on action executing which means just before the action execution starts and then just after the action execution ends over here we also can make this class implement i result filter and after we implement we have got again two methods over here on result executed on result executing so one option you may use it for tracing purpose like how far the call has gone to so normally when we publish the mvc application on a server if at all call reaches to the server if at all there are any problems which happens <coughs> during a specific method call or action method call we may apply this h filter on top of that method and then maybe we can keep on recording what is it that is happening right now with the method so whether method executed successfully whether result is executed successfully we can very well keep on checking it however whenever we go for interface implementation one thing is for sure we have to implement all these four methods because it's a interface implementation 
we 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 have to continue writing code for each of the method here, and we remove something called as throw new, not implemented exception, and in order to apply this filter, filter is always applied like an attribute. So we may require another thing over here called as attribute usage. That this class will decorate any other class or any other method. We can specify here attribute usage or target dot, and we can target it to suppose methods by default. Second option is there. If any class needs to be used as an attribute, it becomes compulsory that we should inherit from a class called as attribute. Then, and then maybe implement rest of the interfaces. But then instead of doing all this decoration and arranging all the infrastructure, we have a very better option. Let's not do everything by ourselves. Let's go and create a class called as edge filter again. and then let's try to implement an inter a class which is called as action filter attribute class itself let me show you the definition of action filter attribute let me go to definition now and just observe what comes up now here you'll find out this class actually inherits from filter attribute which if i again right click and go to definition will inherit from something called as attribute next at what level this class object will decorate or about what this class will tell extra information that is specified in attribute usage here that is this can be applied at a class level at a method level now let's go back let me again go to definition of attribute filter so you saw the definition of filter attribute and this class action filter attribute also implements action i action filter and i result filter which we were trying to implement some time back but the important point to note there is already a definition written for these methods for me which means the definition is blank right now but then at least because of this virtual keywords we will be able to implement only whatever we want and not all of them will be forced to us so what will i do then i will write a class called as edge filter which inherits from action filter attribute and then whichever methods that you need to override you can very well do that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to override two methods on action getting executed or on action executed and then i'm going to change override on act result executing maybe let's say so what is it that we are going to want to do in this case so i'm going to put a breakpoint here and a breakpoint here then i'm going to put a breakpoint in start of this method end of this method right now and then let's run and see what happens but how do i apply a filter you apply a filter in this manner you just specify i want a filter at this level you just refer the namespace and implement it so which means this class object will tell more information about the index method call how we will see now let me run the code now f5 first call will travel to index method let's say continue let's say continue now we have on action executed which means after the action gets executed we are here let me continue then once the result is already uh, there then we have next method and finally we'll have index page available so point to note now what can i do in these regions so let me run this code now again run again run and we'll break here so what is it that i'm going to do here is in a filter context if you guys can check we have one concept which is called as result result is a view result and result has a master page name which obviously we can change here itself but however instead of changing only master page i'm going to make some changes in that view data itself so there is f name that we have and then let me find out how whether this input parameter can offer us that data so under the result under the view result you will find out we have got a concept which is called as view data here itself so what i am going to do now this is all from view result right now we have got filter context is going to go and give us something called as view result so if you can see action result if i say go to definition action result is a base and view result is a derived class of it so what i am going to do now i am going to convert that view result into action result 
and capture this view data of F name and view bag of S name and make the changes in these values based on the need. So let's go to edge filter. Let's try using immediate window now. Run again. So we break in here. Continue, continue, and here we are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to immediate window and do certain changes in the code at runtime. Let me show you values first, which we have. So let's get now filter context. Yeah, filter context can give us something called as view result. So I'll take filter context dot. We have something called as result. Let me check if at all we can get all the data here. No. Result. Result is of type view result. I'll take this as action result. dot and this is of type view result so maybe Let me continue. So I took maybe a result as view result dot I can get here view data and in view data what was there was f name itself. And now the f name value is such in itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the value right now to let's say suppose Rohit. And then now we have set up a new value for the f name itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this code and Make a small change here. F name equal to a new value. Let's put up now Virat. And let's try to specify one more. That would be view bag itself. Of S name, if you recall. And we'll specify new value now. Let's say, let's see what happens now. Run again. Run this, run this. Now current value in a view data is basically something called as if I capture all in quick watch. Quick watch shows the current value is Sachin. But then I'm going to change it to Virat now. So let's step next. The next value that we have here is in view bag must be Tendulkar. Tendulkar and we're going to change it to now Kohli. Now when we run this code, we'll find out what you get here is a different value altogether. Which means we have intruded in between and we tried to collect a different value specifically for our UI now. So point to note here that this is right now still hard coded. But imagine see based on a situation like what day uh, is this based on that we can change the master page. Maybe if we want to go and change the role of the you can see user on demand, we can do all of you can see such customized code after the even let's say result is uh, uh, yet to go on a, a client side. Just before that, we are going to go and make some small changes using on result executing also. Action executed also, we can do something similar. So point to note is action and result filters may not be commonly used, but for setting a master page dynamically, one may use specifically result executing as a action filter method. Now how authorize is used, how error uh, I can say, uh, filter is used, that part we'll understand in a while.